So, and so welcome to this evening's round table, TOC round table for young adults and we are all young at heart. The presentation title is Surviving These This Life. Um, some people think that this is like a, the game of life. You know, they've had many games uh, for teenagers and young people. We've enjoyed some of them call there's a game called life. But life is not a game. It is very serious. And every moment we spend is precious. And so with everything that we have been told that is happening, everything that we ourselves have experienced, um, I don't know about you, but if you had a week that passed and you never heard one bad news, raise your hand. Anyone who didn't have any disappointment this week, you had uh, no disappointments, you had no bad news, no pain, nothing went wrong, nobody was mean to you, raise your hand. Go ahead. Hmm? Oh, what about if you did have some of these things happen to you this week? Let's say you were one of those who had disappointments, you heard bad news, um, raise your hand. Anybody? Yep, there's one person. So we did not open our laptops or our phones and saw something pop up on the news that says the world has gone even worse than it was last week. So here's what we're going to do. We're trying and seeking to assist as many persons as possible to find um, a handle, to get a handle, a grip or perspective on what is really going on in our world today. We are trying our best to assist everyone to get to the place where they can. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm kind of losing my, okay. Hmm. May God help us. Let us pray. Our Father and our God in heaven, into your hands we commit this session we ask your holy spirit to take full control we are inviting your holy angels to minister grace to my laptop and that everything will go according to plan we're praying for the young people that need to be here even the adults that need to be here because many of us are really not aware we do not remember how it is to fight this this battle we thank you for the victory that we have in Jesus Christ. Thank you for all the wonderful information that you have provided for us for this evening's program. May your name be glorified. May your children be strengthened and encouraged. And may this be a catalyst for change for all who are listening and all who will join. In Jesus' name, we surrender all to you. Amen. All right. And so we begin. So travel life's journey. As we travel life's journey, we have to have a strategy, um, a plan, right? Nobody gets up and goes on a trip. Say, Sister Brooks, you live all the way in New York and you're going to San Francisco, California. You have a plan. If you're a Christian, you're going to pray about that plan. So number one, we pray. We are praying for us to be in God's will as we journey from earth to heaven. Life is a journey because we are pilgrims on this earth and our journey ultimately take us to heaven. So we pray, we plan, we have our plans. Um, we place those plans before the Lord, ask him to uh, scratch anything that's not according to his will. Have you done that recently? When was the last time you did that? Um, then you prepare, you prepare yourself. Um, in whatever capacity, whatever way that God has asked you to prepare. And then you you develop partnerships and bonds because we are not an island. We were never meant to be alone or to live unto ourselves. So we have partnership, whether it be a sister, a sibling, a parent, um, co-workers, classmates, or a spouse. Partnerships. Um, we persevere. We keep things going. We push on toward the mark. 
we don't give up. We may fall, but we get up, we brush off ourselves and by the grace of God, we keep going. Then we weigh the pros and the cons and we, by the grace of God, make good decisions. Amen? Okay, so what is our end game? What is your end game? And I'm going to be inviting persons online to go ahead and assist me in reading some of the slides. All right. So uh, as followers of Christ, every single event in our lives lead up to one thing. So that's the first thing. We start by looking at where we want to end. Do you agree with me? If you're deciding, oh, I'm going to pursue a degree in um biology in your mind you have where you want to end i want to end up being an environmental biologist right that's my end game so you pray about it you plan you prepare and you get yourself to where you need to be to be an environmental biologist right that's your end game but for the christian not only are you just a mere of environmental biologist, you're a Christian environmental biologist. And that speaks volume because God needs persons in every aspect of life to shed light in the lives of those who do not know him, right? So can we see that happening in your life? Can you see that happening? So we believe, we pray, and we share the gospel of God so that when we meet him, he may be pleased with us. Our end game is that our lives will please God. Eternal life is our end game. We're not just here for the degree and we work for a prestigious university or company um, and we make our mark, then we die. No, our end game is eternal life. So every plan we have must look and resemble that of someone whose end game is life eternal with God. We follow the will of God, right? Using Jesus as our example to claim a spot in his kingdom when the time comes. There are many people who uh, their end game is to join one of the most um, popular or famous or wealthiest for Fortune 500 companies and become the CEO of this or that and find their spot in that particular company and stay there and work till they retire and they die. Is that your end game? To make millions and then you die. Well, as a Christian, our end game is to find our place in the kingdom of God. But aside from meeting our creator in the afterlife, we know that the time will come for the Lord to personally visit and make himself known to every living creature. So what does that have to do with surviving life? It has everything to do. It's not how you start, it's how you end. Amen? And so, life is a battleground. For the Christian, because of the great controversy, life is a battleground. And we have to have very good battle strategies in order to survive and win the battle. So whatever your battlefield looks like right now, perhaps it's your college campus, <laughs> perhaps... It's your new syllabus that you're looking at that you have to be covering in order to make it from one place to the next. Maybe it's your new boss, your new job. That's your battlefield right now. Maybe it's just your mind. You are not at peace. Whatever the case may be, here are some strategies that are very important. Who can read those strategies for me? Can you see them clearly? The first one, if you want to go far, you must have what? A, par a prayer life. Your prayer life must be equal to or more than the pressures of life. Do we agree with that? Anybody, you can talk to me. Yes. Yes, because listen, Daniel, the more he had, the more responsibility he had is the more he prayed. And even when trials came, Daniel was still praying, right? So the plans and preparation, according to the inspiration and direction of God, anything that you're planning for, preparing to do, must be based on what God has directed you. You cannot be because Dick, Tom, Harry, and Mary, and Jane said so. Mm -mm. 
And so the biggest mistake some of us make uh, when we were younger is that we listen to everybody or we listen to a TV program or our best friend and we did not consult God. And so we are here to tell you that don't follow our example in listening to everybody else except God. Let's move according to God's plan. That's one thing because when the plan is from somebody else, the enemy, as we will see, can use them to lead us um, off track and we don't get to our end goal. Now, partnership, I'm sorry, partnerships, establish strong partnership with God and like-minded persons. You are not alone in this life and whether or not you know it, can two walk together lest they be agreed? No. So if you are doing a project at school and you have a project partner, uh, you have a best friend and you both go to the same college or uh, you work working on the same project on the job, you want to, by God's grace, have like-minded people. If you don't, then you better make sure that your partner is God. I remember once my daughter was telling me that they had, I think, an odd number in her class when she was doing computer science in one of the uh, labs. She didn't have a partner. And she was devastated that she didn't have a partner to do that computer lab. And I remember saying to her, God is your partner. Do you know she came out of there passing that class? Because God was her lab partner. Amen? Look at God. He is truly right there for you okay so perseverance regardless of your setbacks and your disappointments press on press on do not give up and jesus is our example he persevered now pros and cons weigh everything and choose the option that will lead you to your end goal do not let um the what you would say the line in the road <laughs> prevent you just be very very um persevering now big questions we're going to do big things today we're looking at big because god has big plans for your life you have a big future in front of you and we are living in a big world all right so we have big questions some of these questions we're going to ask ourselves um Imagine if Jesus visits us right at this moment, knowing that our end goal is heaven. Do you think that uh, he would be proud of you currently? Proud of you, uh, who you are currently? I am sure there will be varying answers to this question. You don't have to answer. Um, every one of us, we know if Jesus would be proud of us. But one thing I am sure of is that we are works in progress. So God expects us to grow, right? The important thing is to be where God wants us to be when he does visit us. Can someone please read the next question? Um, how do I'll you know if Jesus is... Oh, go ahead, Sister Joan. Sister Joan, you go ahead. It's fine. You go okay. ahead. How do we know if Jesus' visitation is nearing? Here are signs that you need to look for. How do I plan for a life while waiting for Jesus to come? Amen. Thank you. And so these are some of the things that... We asked, so um, I think it was last week, I was reminded uh, how um, when my husband and I, we were married, a family member said to us, we should not think of having children because Jesus is coming. So how much preparation, how much planning do you put in life on earth today? Um, needless to say, our, we have three children. Our youngest is going to be 22 soon. And the, yes, yes, we are still here. So the quest, a lot of times when our young people are planning, it is hard to plan uh, without proper perspective. We are waiting for Jesus to come. But there are some things that are very important as Christians that we know we can do as we occupy till God comes. All right.
And so big answers, sorry. Big answers. So the first signs cover about the coming of Christ is the destruction that the um of all the earth and all its inhabitants. Manifestations of this include wars, famines, natural disasters, and widespread diseases. According to Matthew 24, 7, nations will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Young people, everyone, can you see this happening? Yes. The Bible prophesies that there will be a global food shortage. Um, there will be pandemics as well. And Jesus describes the earthquakes that will occur um, after one after the other, while the book of Luke mentions pestilence of horrendous diseases. Now we are in a situation where um, today there are ongoing civil wars everywhere armed conflicts in different nations like Syria, Afghanistan, Ethiopia. Collectively, all around, around the world, we see our other nations involved in wars. Um, in the last days, notice these things. The massive disturbances will bring tremendous pain and loss, and you're suffering that. COVID was a disturbance. It brought loss of life. Um, around the world, everyone, every country was affected by COVID. And so we see signs in the people, not just signs in natural disaster. And this is the part, the part that affects us. And it's all biblical, which is why we need perspective. I am here on earth. I am a pilgrim. I am passing through this earth. My life on earth is surrounded by these events, right? I am a part of this. I'm history in the making, my life. So the first one is wicked attitudes. This impacts everybody. Now, this refers to morals that have deteriorated more than the usual share of evil. On a regular day, the chance of having a bad encounter with people is low, right? On a regular day. It's not every day that you can experience someone cutting in line, bumping you without a proper apology or snobbing you outright. However, in the last days, you will notice that even in church, there'll be many more bad apples than good ones, so to speak. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 10, 24, verse 10, and then many will be offended will betray one another and will hate one another. Have you been betrayed lately? Have you felt hated recently? Um, if you're on a college campus, if you're even in the, the, the school choir or you're on the job, you're, you're going to experience betrayal. Um, you're going to be hated for no reason, like Joseph and his brothers. You know, there will be more hatred circulating principles are more corrupt and the worst thing is that they won't even feel ashamed a lot of people are hateful and they're not ashamed of it um even now we thought that racism was you know a thing of the past but it is very evident even now and so the devil is always planning people um planning planting people and things that help to um, propagate wickedness. So he plans to create an avenues so that you can experience hatred. It is not the new normal for a Christian. Hatred should not be the new normal, but for a lot of people, it's the way of life. Hey, I expect it. I'm going to be hated. It's a new norm. That's sad. And so this is what our young people have to cope with. This is what you will face as you have your, your, your plan, your end goal. You want to live your life, but you're faced with hatred on the job, at school, even in your homes. The next thing to watch for is dysfunction in the family. Everything we do is going to affect us, especially our family members. So the family is the basic unit of community found in the book of Psalm. The Bible tells us that it's such a wonderful thing for everyone to live together in unity. At a time where wickedness prevails, it will undoubtedly affect our inner circles, starting in our families. 
One of the greatest things that can break you down when you're trying to reach your goal is a dysfunctional family. When you have issues, family crisis, it can really cut you back and you have to persevere in the midst of family drama, family difficulties. You have to push forward. And we're going to give some very important tips at the end of this presentation. Big tips on how to help you achieve your big goals, right? And so at a time where wickedness prevails, it will undoubtedly affect the inner circle. And that's your family, your closest people in your life. In the book of Timothy, it predicts that there will come a time where there is no natural affection for one's family members. People will be disobedient, will, you know, disobedience will rule in the hearts of children. And it's not just children, there'll be unkindness everywhere. We know that one's relationship with your family affects your character. <laughs> Somebody said that you get married so you can learn patience. No, you have children so you can learn patience. You get married so you can learn uh, forgiveness. I think that's what it is. And so our family relationship affect our character. We can become bitter and angry and mean people based on how our family members relate to us or how we have to relate to our family members. That can affect your end goal. That can affect your future, your journey in life in a very, very, very big way. And what does this tell us about the gravity of science? If you don't believe me, think about Joseph and his family, Jacob and his family, okay? Even Jesus and his family. So if you are facing a dysfunctional family, um, it's sad to say that be comforted that you're not alone. Is it, is it okay to say that? Even as Christians, we have dysfunction in our families. And um, we can either allow God to use them to be building blocks, stepping stones, or, you know, break us down. And so whoever claims to love um, God, yet hates his brother and sister, is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister, whom they have seen, cannot love God. And this is one of the things that you're going to realize, like persons will say they're Christians and they love God. But then when you look around, you realize that there's hatred. So this brings us to the next point. Our devotion to God. So that was talking about your relationship with your family. What about your relationship with God and the, the relationship that others around us as Christians have with God? Um, there's a decline. We cannot even fully love our family members. The people that God has appointed to be with us for the rest of our lives. Remember I told you that relationship is important because no one in this family uh, stands alone. Right, Joya? We need partnership in life. One of the steps that on this journey was partnerships. And our family members, we're supposed to partner with God and our family to make it to heaven together yes and so it says a lot about our relationship with god our relationship with our family says a lot okay about our relationship with god so the book of timothy illustrates this people will be lovers of selves who among us doesn't have a family member who is all about themselves and i know we're not we're not trying to talk about our family members now are we no we're just stating the facts we're being general. So I'm not pointing to anybody's family member. But if you look around, some selfish person in your family can hinder your growth and your progress and the things that you plan to do. Let's say you've decided to save as a family to do something, to achieve your goals. And some family member took it and spent all your, your savings on something they thought they needed and lost that money. Or let's say they're inconsiderate and they don't do their due diligence to be responsible for what it is that they need to do. That can set you back in your goals, in your plans, in your future, right? And surviving this life means you're going to have to learn to navigate your way around family members that are lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful proud and you think how can someone being boastful and proud affect my future and my life 
You better believe it can. Um, there are those who are abusive. And these are signs of the end. So the question is, how do you survive in the times of the end when you have persons in your life that are abusive? But these are signs. It is going to happen. There's no getting around it. So how do you handle these things when you have persons that are abusive, disobedient to their parents or they do whatever, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous? I'd say you on your job, you're trying to make, you know, do the best at your work and somebody comes and tells your boss or your coworker something and they just turn against you, not knowing the truth. How are you supposed to survive that? You're in church. You really want to serve the Lord. And this comes at you without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous. It's hard to have a partner that you're working with, teaming up with, who's treacherous, who's rash, conceited even. Lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God. Narcissism will be at a at its peak in the end of time. Do we see that happening today? Can you imagine dealing with these types of people? Okay, so sad but true. Let's get some inspiration on. So life inspiration for the young. Woo, doesn't this look nice being going somewhere quiet and just having some peaceful time, just you and God? Let's see how time how we're going to spend our time in life while we wait for the coming of god so a god-centered schedule time is everything do we agree with that what you spend your time doing where you spend your time is very very significant here you can create a like a little road map and say how much time you're going to spend with your family your work um, or your education if you're not working but you're in college how much time you're going to spend um, with your friends and even your hobbies and your vacation time. It's important, everybody, to have some hobbies, have something that you do that is just you. Even if your hobby is making cards for people who are in the hospital and sick, that's a ministry, but it's also a hobby. It's something you love and enjoy doing because it relaxes you and it gives you joy. Vacation time, even if it's a staycation, right? You can't afford to go to Hawaii. You can't afford to go to Jamaica. You can't afford to go to the Pocono Mountains, but you can stay home, staycation. Spend some time at home, not doing work, not doing school, not doing the everyday things that you do. Spend some time rejuvenating your mind, your body, and spiritually. And also, friends are important. Um, one must be friendly if you want to have friends. The Bible says you ought to show your friend, yourself friendly. Let me hurry up and get through this. All right, so big deal. What's the big deal that we need to learn? In this battlefield as Christians, um, in our spiritual journey as Christians, it's vital to acknowledge the unseen battle that rages around us. I'm going to ask someone to help me read um, my next slide. So please, somebody prepare. See, there's relentless adversity, uh, adversary. The relentless, there's a relentless adversary who wanders ceaselessly. All right. Yielding, yearning to lead us astray. Let's delve into the depths of this truth. Let's look at 1 Peter 5 verse 8 says, awake, keep a clear mind, be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary roams like um, a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, whom he may consume. Our spiritual foe, Satan, his strategies uh, targets all humankind. All right. Um, we have to remember that nobody is indispensable. Nobody is... Um, so holy and so good and so surrounded that they're not a target of the enemy. Jesus Christ himself was. He doesn't discriminate, right? It doesn't matter who you are. You're going to be on his target list. He shows no favoritism. 
paying no mind to your faith, your wealth, or your moral character. His ultimate aim is to disrupt, deceive, and destroy. Mercy. That's a big deal, everybody. You cannot be naive. We cannot be naive. We must pay attention to how the devil wants to exploit us. All right. Now it's your turn to help me read. Next big deal. Who wants to help me read the next big deal? The, uh, an astonishing fact is that Satan can even manipulate other people as instruments in his scheme to assault us. Another tactic of Satan is to infiltrate our thoughts to cause eternal havoc. He is capable of exploiting your current circumstances to launch his attacks. He makes use of every loophole, every vulnerability against you. Satan is unceasingly on the offense, but he has a preferred target. Christians, those who have given their hearts to Christ and are committed to his teachings. These devoted followers are constantly under, sat under Satan's scrutiny. He is relentless in his pursuit to make them stumble. Thank you. That's a big deal. Do you agree? We cannot be naive to these things. This is a big deal. Thank you, my sister. Okay, next slide. Oh, that went by fast. Sorry. I'm sorry. There we go. Do we have another volunteer? Yes, I can. Go ahead. The big caution us to stay vigilant, to remain alert, and understand that our enemy is constantly waiting for an opportune moment to strike and bring ruin. This underscores the fact that while Saturn's attack her incessant, he holds certain moments as ideal for launching his spirit onslaught. These times often result in tan tangible repercussions in our physical lives. Therefore, it's imperative to maintain our spiritual defenses. Be prepared for the times when he will strike with full force as the good, look, good book advises. If you think you are standing firm, be vigilant so you won't fall. Amen. Big deal. Very big deal. All right. Um, next one we are reading. So here, those are big deals. And here are some big tips, right? To help us, to help our youth. Um, surviving as a youth, here are some pointers for surviving with responsibilities of school, family, work, etc. from a Christian perspective. Point to remember, it is it is possible that you found yourself lured into spiritual slumber, right? Um, this is where you are. Remember the question that was asked earlier. If Jesus should come to visit you now, would he be pleased with where you are? And so it is possible that you are one of the youth or, you know, adult that has found yourself um, lured into spiritual slumber, seemingly unconcerned about matters of the spirit, or perhaps under the misapprehension that you possess the strength to counteract the devil's machinations single-handedly. A lot of times, even as adults, we fool ourselves thinking that, as my sister just read, let's be careful. We think we stand, lest we fall. We think we, we've got this. We're okay. Let me remind you 
This is only through the divine power of Jesus Christ that we hope to resist such an adversary. And this is a big help for us to remember only through Christ are we able to fight against Satan's machinations, right? It is a grave mistake to believe otherwise. It is unwise to wait until our families, our marriages, our careers, our spiritual development, or prosperity come under siege before we rally our spiritual defenses. Remember, our life is a battleground. We are at war. We have to be vigilant. We can't be distracted, right? We cannot be distracted. So I'm going to invite uh, everyone in line. You get turns. Open your mics as we go into each of these tips. There are three tips per slide. So uh, go ahead, someone. You can read the first three. What are the big tips? Prioritize your relationship with God. Start your day with prayer and reading the Bible. This foundation will provide you with guidance, strength, and peace as you navigate your various responsibilities. Read, read all three tips on this slide. Okay. Number two, time management. Plan your schedule wisely. Allocate time for school, work, family, and personal activities. Balance is key to avoiding burnout and staying focused on your goals. Number three, set clear goals. Clearly define your short-term and long-term goals for school, work and personal development. Having a clear vision will help you stay motivated and organized. Seek wisdom and guidance. Proverbs 3, five to six encourages you to trust in the Lord and seek his guidance. Don't hesitate to seek advice from mentors, parents, teachers, and church leaders when facing important decisions. Five, maintain healthy relationships. Honor your family and respect your parents' authority. Ephesians 6, 1 to 3. Foster healthy relationships with friends and colleagues as they can provide support and encouragement. Six, work diligently. Colossians 3.23 reminds us to work as though we're working for the Lord. Approach your studies and job responsibilities with diligence and excellence. Do we have another volunteer to read 7 through, through 9? Practice, humility, and patience. Life's challenges can be overwhelming, but remember that God's timing is perfect. Cultivate humility and patience in difficult situations, trusting that God is in control. Practice self-care. Take care of your physical, emotional, and mental well-being. Engage in activities that rejuvenate you, and don't hesitate to ask for help when needed. Give back. Serve others as an expression of your faith. Participate in volunteer activities, help your family, and engage in acts of kindness within your community. Awesome. Any volunteers to read 10 through 12? Next person to read. Avoid. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. For real. Go ahead, my sister. It's all right. You can do it. Sister Judith, please go ahead and do it. I read all the time. Oh, okay. Um, 10. Avoid compromising values. In a world full of distraction and temptations, stay true to to your 
to your Christian values and principles. Let your actions reflect your faith and integrity. 11, stay connected to your church. Engage with your church community, attend services, join youth groups, and participate in Bible studies to deepen your spiritual growth. 12, forgiveness and grace. Understand the importance of forgiveness and extending grace to yourself and others. This approach will help you maintain healthy relationships and a peaceful heart. Thank you. Oh boy. Okay. Um, and so the last two, um, do we have a volunteer to read the last two tips? No volunteers? Number 13. Seek, okay. seek prof you can go ahead. I read already if you want to read. It's okay. You can go ahead. Okay. okay. Seek professional help. Just as you had seeked medical help for physical issues, it's okay to seek professional help for mental health concerns. God works through skilled professionals to bring healing. Number 14, gratitude and contentment. Cultivate an attitude of gratitude and contentment. Acknowledge God's blessings in your life, even during difficult times, and find joy in his provision. Awesome, awesome. Weren't those not great tips? Yes, they I were. Now, imagine if you implement all of these things from the very get-go. Okay. From the moment you started planning your life when you were a teenager and you, you kept going at it and you kept them and you remind yourself, right? So let's do a quick summary here. Um, from the Christian perspective, big tip, spend time with God. Prioritize your time wisely. Delegate tasks. Take breaks. You see, sometimes we think we should be going like the ever ready bunny, but no. God, even Jesus himself took breaks. Even God says, we're going to rest on one day. He did work for the whole six days. He looked back at his work. He said, ah, there was, this was good work. Now let's rest, right? So take breaks. And doesn't mean that you're going to take too much break now, right? And so get enough sleep. The laws of health are important. Eat healthy food. You cannot be well and reach your end goal if you're sick. One of the difficulties and one of the things that the enemy will try to throw in our way is for us to be unhealthy, ignore the laws of health so we won't finish our, our, our degree, ignore the laws of health so we won't reach that end goal that we have set. And if he can get you to destroy your health, then you lose everything. We're more effective. We get things done quicker when we find ourselves in a position where we are healthy. So ignoring the laws of health is not a good idea. The devil's plan is to make sure you're too tired to exercise, too tired to cook good, good healthy meals, and you are too busy to get enough rest. Don't fall for those, all right? Big tips for everybody. So that's a basic summary. Now, what's a big hope as we come to a close? Big hope. Rest in God's peace. Jesus promises peace that surpasses understanding. Trust in his peace during challenging times. Are you going through a challenging time right now? Know that God is in control. This is something I've said over and over again to my friends. Whenever they say, oh, they text and say, listen, this is happening. That's happening. My, my thing is always, okay, I'm praying God is in control. And he is. God is in the country in control of all the affairs of these children who gave themselves. Remember, we say start by praying about everything being in God's plan, then God's in control. All right. So practice humility is one of the things I want to highlight. Recognize your limitations. Be humble enough to say, 
I cannot do this by myself. I am tired or I need help, God. And embrace humility. You don't need to have all the answers. Rely on God's wisdom and grace. You don't know the answers to everything. That's why you're in school or in college. That's why you have supervisors. That's why you have learning experiences, right? That's why mistakes happen because we don't know everything, but we learn from them. Be humble enough to accept because we stress ourselves when we think we must know everything unless we had the opportunity to know it and we didn't take the opportunity. And then that's a different story. So avoid comparison. Comparison can lead to feelings of inadequacy. Remember that your work, big hope, your worth comes from God and he has a unique purpose for your life. Don't try to live nobody else's life, please. Trying to live somebody else's life will ruin you. It will hurt you and it will prevent you from reaching your end goal because God had a plan and a purpose just for you. Rest in God's love. Rest in God's love. Understand that God's love for you is unwavering. <clears throat> Remember Romans chapter 8. The last three or four verses of Romans chapter 8 tells us that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. So even in difficult times, he, his love remains. It remains constant and can provide comfort and strength. And finally, big hope. Remember that life as a youth with multiple responsibilities can be challenging. It is not supposed to be all peaches and cream. So if you have a challenge in life, that's a part of it, right? But with a strong foundation in your faith, you can navigate these challenges with grace, perseverance, see that word, and the guidance of God's word. You will not go wrong. You will not fail because you have faith in God who will navigate you and give you his strength and his guidance. Big hope. Remember that you are not alone. There are many other Christian young people who are going through the same things you are. They're faced with pandemic issues, disease that's rampant, inflation, uh, working so hard and still can't pay their bills, <laughs> feeling sick and tired and weak all the time, having some physical ailments, having relational issues, living in a world where people are cold and hard and um, insensitive and lovers of self, they're having that issue too. Don't be afraid to reach out to for help when you need it. This is hope that we have in the coming of the Lord. Jesus Christ is for you. When God is for you, who can be against you? So we pray that this was a blessing to you as you navigate through this life and as you reach towards your end goal, which is to be with Christ for eternity. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you so much for these tips that you've given we thank you for the big help, the big hope. We thank you, Lord, for the big tips. We thank you for the big plans that you have for us from before the foundations of the world. We ask that your Holy Spirit will inspire each young person that would have listened and those who will listen to the recording. May your power of your Holy Spirit fill your children with strength and courage as they navigate through these difficult times, especially those going back into school for this upcoming semester and those who are already back in school, whether it be they're in the, are on the job, whatever their circumstances, cover your children with big protection and big strength and courage. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen.